Hello, I'm Javis Lewis and today I'm going to show you how to install WordPress on Plesk. There are two ways to do this. One is a one-click installer and the other one is a custom installer which lets you define all kinds of values. We're going to go through both of them so I'm sure by the end of it you will know how to do it. Inspired by our thread on the Parallels Plesk forum, I thought perhaps I will quickly show you the two different options that you have to install WordPress on Plesk and we go through this step by step together. So here I have uh, Plesk 11.5 in service provider view and this runs on Amazon. Right now I don't have a subscription for my domain. Let's check my domain. It's vipscoop.com. And all we get right now is the Parallels Plus default page. And let's head over to subscriptions and add a new subscription, which is my domain, vipscoop.com. It goes without saying that the domain you're going to use for your project needs to resolve, obviously, to your Plus panel, otherwise, this isn't going to work. Okay, I'm getting a little warning here. That's because I'm using an Amazon instance and my domain resolves to this IP address, which is my elastic IP address. But Plesk works with an internal IP address or Amazon works with an internal IP address and therefore I get this little warning message. Let's ignore this. I head over here to manage hosting and install an application. Okay, I can, I've got three options here. I can either head over to Applications, I can use the Features Application tab here and install WordPress, or I can go uh, to this thing here and say Install Application. I'm going to use the tab because that's the same in Power User Mode. We head over here. WordPress can usually be found under the Featured Applications. If it's not showing up there for some reason, you can always go to All Available Applications and then sh search for WordPress there. Now, before we click any buttons here, this is an important thing to remember. This is where just hitting install will use the quick install option, which will install WordPress in a subdirectory called WordPress under your domain. Or if you click on that little drop down here, you have the custom installer. So I'll take you through both of them. I'll start with the quick installer first, and then we'll do the custom install afterwards. Right, hit install. And you really only have to do this once. It takes a minute or two for Plesk to download WordPress, provision a database, create an admin user, and hey presto, there we go. Green button come, green, green bar comes up here. We're, we're all good to go at vipscoop.com forward slash WordPress. Well, let's see if it works. I'm not gonna click any buttons here. I'm just gonna type it in, WordPress, and see what happens. There we go. So that installation has worked. That's really good to know. The admin interface is a slightly different issue. So in order to log into any WordPress installation, we have a front page URL, and what we're gonna attach here is wp-admin, which will then redirect me to wp-login.php and a big parameter string here. Since this has been created with the Plesk one-click installer, I will have to use my Plesk admin credentials to get into WordPress. So the username here is going to be admin, and the password is going to be exactly what I use to log in to my Plesk instance, the admin and whatever that password is. Interesting, hasn't worked. It's very interesting. Ah, typo, sorry about that. So yes, that, that is how that works, and we're in on the back end. So same credentials for both Plesk admin interface as well as WordPress admin interface. Uh, that's good, that's really good. If you're coming from Plesk, you click the administrative interface button, it will take you straight there. Let me try that as well. So let's log out here. Not log into WordPress anymore. Click the admin interface button. New window opens up. Confirm the non-secure form warning. And you're back in the back end. That is perfect. There's only one caveat to this, and that is if you go into your profile, you edit your profile, and you were to go and change your password down here, then what would happen is that Plesk would not know about this password anymore. You could still log into WordPress 
via those credentials. But the problem is that if you ever try to do that from Plesk, it won't let you in. So to avoid that confusion, I would strongly recommend you install WordPress with the custom installer, which we're gonna look at next. Just a, one small thing here, if I go over here, and uh, I always like to open this in a new tab so we can close this one down. We've got uh, the front page of WordPress here, and we've got the back end of WordPress here. And just to prove a point, I've got a new post. I'll just quickly create a test post. This is a test post. Let's publish, and this should come up on the front page. This is a test post. Awesome. But you also see Plesk has called this My CMS. That's just out of the box. You can, of course, uh, change that any way you like. You go back into your admin interface and go to settings, general. That is where you'd, you'd say, you know, something else. I don't want to make this a course in WordPress. This is literally just how to install WordPress on Plesk. So we're going to close this down. We're going to abandon this here. And we go back to our subscription inside Plesk and go back to the, the domain here and head back onto two applications. And we'll do exactly the same thing again, but now we're gonna use the custom installer. Uh, just like before, just click this thing. Don't click on install, click on install custom. And if you do that, then you will be taken through a wizard you have to agree to some conditions. Those are the ones by WordPress or by any other web application you want to install. Hit next. And this is now where I'm being given several options here. If I have other domains installed, then I can uh, I can check which, which domain or which variation of the domain I'd like. So I'm going to use the, this one here. Um, you can define a subdirectory here and uh, notice that this is going to make up the actual URL of your website. So if you leave that blank, then WordPress is going to be installed under just your domain.com in the root directory of your domain. Anything past here will mean it'll be your domain.com forward slash whatever you type here. And it's important to remember that anything that you do here will always live in your HTTP docs directory. We'll look at where those files are next. I'm gonna leave this blank for now, which means that WordPress is gonna be installed in the root directory of my web space. Automatically update this app. Uh, we can or cannot check that. That's, that's uh, something if a new version of WordPress comes out. If I tick this, a new version comes out and my WordPress is going to be updated automatically via Plesk. And unticking this means it will not automatically be updated. I'm going to leave that unchecked now and head over to the next part here, which is the administrative access. If I leave the first radio box ticked, then Plesk will just, as in our previous example, create a WordPress user called admin. And if you choose the second option, then you will be given the option to specify your own admin user. There's been a news bulletin that a user in WordPress called admin isn't actually a good idea because there is a possibility for hackers to get into WordPress. So it's strongly advised not to use admin as an actual admin account in WordPress anymore. So instead, we'll use something else. Uh, let's just say test user probably just as bad but for this example it's going to be good test user and the admin password for test user we're going to say it's password but don't tell anyone I could click install right now and the process would work just fine or I can click this option and go show all settings in which I'm being given even more options I can define an email address I'm going to leave mine here because that's an email address I, I do remember and it's got my gravatar associated with it, so that's all good. Site name is what we saw in our previous WordPress installation, the MyCMS. I'll just call it super duper website. Interface language, that's the, the interface of WordPress. So we, could, uh, we could check any of these. Let's leave it in English. And if I wanted to specify my own database name, even the prefix what is used for the WordPress tables in the database, I can do all that here. And I can even 
specify a database username and the database password. Uh, those things will be created if they don't exist in Plesk already. Uh, if you leave these blank, then Plesk will go ahead and create this for you. So I'm going to leave that as it is and hit install. And now Plesk is going to install in my root directory an installation of WordPress, create the database uh, and use the admin credentials that I have specified. Just like before, these buttons will work and Plesk will now honor the credentials that I have just given it. So if I click that, just like before, confirm that, and we're going right into the back end of WordPress here. And notice where that lives now. So it's in vipscoop.com forward slash WP admin. So that is the correct admin interface. And if I visit the front page, that's also working and it's now called super duper website. Fantastic. To prove a point, let's just quickly write a post. And it works. Refresh it. And here it is, custom installer, it has worked. So these options will work no matter if you're using the custom installer or the one-click installer. But what will also work, and that's the important thing, if I now log out, let's see if I can log back in. Test user and password. And yes, of course, I do trust this side. That's fine. That's just a report warning. Don't worry about it. And I'm back in. So that is really good. Both options work. Standalone login works and the Plesk login also works. One more thing, let me show you where the files for WordPress are actually living. So I go uh, to the file manager. That, uh, to do this from the top here, you go to subscriptions, you pick your subscription, and then you head over to files which brings up the file manager. So everything lives under HTTP docs. You click that, you have a few default files and folders installed here. So uh, blocks is something that's needed during the installation. You can uh, you can delete that. That's not, not anything we need anymore. Uh, CGI bin, CSS images, test, temp. This is all installed when you create a subscription in Plesk. And those are just test files that let you check if the Web, if the website is actually working. One subdirectory is called WordPress and that was from our previous installation. Do you remember the one-click install? That is that. So if we go into that, that was a, more or less a blank directory and everything in here is WordPress related. So all this is the WordPress installation, about 30 odd megabytes. Blocks and temp are not part of WordPress. Those can be deleted. These only need to be used. These are uh, temporary directories for the APS package that installs WordPress, but it's not used by WordPress. So don't worry about these two directories. Everything else, these three directories, that's WordPress, and everything else is also installed by WordPress. Let's go back to HTTP docs and have a look at the rest of the file. So anything from here onwards, WP admin, WP content, WP includes, that's all WordPress related. Except for the favicon, Ples puts that in and uses the Ples favicon with the Powers branding. And everything else is WordPress. So you can go ahead and delete temp, test, images, CSS, CGI bin, well, leave that there, that's been one of those things. And blogs, you can delete that as well. And this was our other installation. Final thoughts, if you go back to applications, you can clean this up from within, Word, from within Plesk if you decide you no longer need an installation. Don't go ahead and delete the files manually. You'd have to do the same with the databases. You can just go and hit Manage My Applications. And here we have the two applications Plesk has installed for us. So this one was the one-click install, and this one was the custom install. And remember, this was the forward slash WordPress. If I go ahead and remove that now, takes a second, then Plesk will clean up after itself, delete all the files, remove all the databases, and that application now no longer exists. Same with this one, I could remove that one as well, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave that there. Just to prove a point, I'll go back to files, and the WordPress directory is now gone. And with it, all the other files. 
I hope this was helpful. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I've got lots of funky tech tips and tricks all around Plesk and web hosting and WordPress in particular. Don't forget to like me on Facebook and on Google Plus and wherever else you can find me. Adios.